going to give you my number one tip for improving your drum grooves, which is... Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's your favorite cow. So, drums, the make or break for most beats. When I was first starting out, programming my drums was one of the things I struggled with the most to make both unique and interesting. So today, I'm gonna show you five tips on how to improve your drum programming. Let's get into it. Tip number one, don't quantize. Drawing your patterns and having everything on the grid really makes your drums sound really stiff and unnatural. Instead, try playing your drum patterns live on a metronome. For example, As you can see here, it may not be perfect. Some sounds may be a little early, some sounds may be a little late, but that's okay to a certain extent as long as I'm not way off. I'd rather my beats have a natural groove to them than them sounding unnatural. But now you might be saying to yourself, Hold up Mr. Cowman, I can't play my drums live. I have no rhythm. And to that I say, get good. <laughs> Just kidding, kinda. Cause that brings me to my second tip, having certain elements in your drums be static and having other elements in your drums be more rhythmically interesting, which can be done by just drawing them in. I may not suggest that, but given the case that you may be a little bit more inexperienced with playing them live, this is a solution for you. All right, so let's take this pretty basic beat that we made earlier. I added some hi-hats and I quantized everything. So now everything's on the grid. So let's just hear it. pretty basic and kind of boring. So there's like a number of things you can do here. So let's just keep the snare constant on the grid on two and four. Let's add a bass kick right after the snare, both times on the end. A little bit more interesting. Let's have it directly right after. It's getting a little better, it's getting a little bit more interesting. Okay, let's play with the velocity of the hi-hats. Let's have every other one be of a less velocity. And let's add a hi-hat roll right after the snare. Let's try unquantizing some of the bass kicks. Let's try having this one a little bit early. This one a little earlier as well. And let's remove the kick from the second bar. Let's just not have it there. The beat has so much more life now. Even though the snare is consistently on the grid and still pretty rigid, all the other elements in the beat are much more rhythmically interesting now. These are just a few examples. There are honestly endless possibilities that you can do. And you can spend all day experimenting with different rhythmic patterns that you may have heard. Which brings me to my third tip, listening to drummers. It goes without saying that these people are professionals in their field. And if you want to improve your drums, why not go to the people that dedicate their lives to this craft? Start by listening to some of your favorite songs that have cool drum parts, or you can watch drum dedicated YouTube channels like Drumio. They bring in professional drummers to showcase their skills and unique rhythmic patterns. So I honestly do this myself. I go and watch them and I take note of what they do. And even though I'm not a drummer myself, I try to emulate that on my MPK or if I just want to draw some drums in or if you have a sample that has a cool drum part try to emulate those drums in your own drum programming that sample was probably played by a legit drummer so if it ain't broke don't fix it now you might be asking yourself but Mr. Cowman what do these professional drummers even do to make unique drum patterns well that brings me to tip number four syncopation Honestly, syncopation is going to be your best friend when it comes to programming drums. Syncopation can be described as a disturbance or interruption of the regular flow of rhythm. In layman's terms, it changes the way you feel the pulse of the music. The pulse of a piece of music can be felt by hearing a sound on every single beat in the bar consistently. Typically for drums, you would hear the bass kick on the one and the three and the snare on one and the two. So you constantly hear a sound on every single beat. As so. It might as well be a metronome. And now let's take the drums I programmed. Even though originally it was pretty boring, I did offset the beat by moving the bass kick from the three to in the middle 
between three and four. And now with these other changes I also made, it's much more rhythmically interesting and the pulse of the beat is consistently changing. So you expect to hear the kick on three because that's the rhythm of the music, but it's offset because I do it a little bit later than expected. That can be a perfect example of syncopation. So you as a producer now have the chance to experiment with syncopation like we did earlier to make much more interesting and unique drum patterns. I cannot stress enough how much syncopation helps avoid your music be boring. And it's not just relegated to your drums, but since we are talking about your drum patterns here, they are honestly a staple of good drum grooves. Now with this idea of syncopation in mind, I want to give you my number one tip for improving your drum grooves, which is the turnaround. A common problem I see producers make when they're first starting out to make beats, a problem I also face as well, is when you're making a four bar loop for example, your drums will stay repetitive and boring while the rest of your beat will determine when the four bar loop begins and ends. However, a trick I picked up by watching drummers play is adding fills at the end of the loop to show the audience that the loop is ending and that we're introducing a new section or a repeat of the previous section. It keeps the music going and avoids it from being stale. Let me show you an example of what I mean by the turnaround. All right, so take the ending of the spore board loop here. As you can see, I added a lot more kicks towards the end, which ramps up the excitement and shows the audience that the loop is reaching its climax. I also layered that with a drum fill sample, which settles the beat back to the beginning of the loop. This is my personal favorite trick because once again, it makes my drums feel natural and grounded in reality of what a real drummer would do. All right guys, hope this video was helpful. If you did, hit that like button. And if you wanna see more videos from me, consider subscribing, and hitting that notification bell to get notified when I drop more videos. Here are two more of my tutorials that you can watch and I'll see you guys next time. Moo moo. Oh.